You're tuned to Music and Ideas 91.3 KVCS. This is Sean Donovan, and I'm here live with Tom Kell and Amico Woods, and Tom was just telling us that he wants to go out singing when he goes out. Sounds like a good idea to me. <laughs> Tom, a native Seattleite, and he, uh, you hit it big in the 70s with the Sky Boys, right? Yeah, I had a pretty, a pretty, that was a pretty popular local band. We, we were kind of the it band for a while here. It's pretty cool. And Emiko, Southern California girl. Yep, Los Angeles. Looks like Tom's been spending some time down there. He's got a nice tan. <laughs> California sun. <laughs> and we're glad you could squeeze us in. And, and so why don't we kick off with the song? What do you, what do you got lined up sure, for us? a song called The Fool. Um, it's on our soon to be recorded. We're just about to go in the studio for, for our next record. And this will be a song off that. We do it in pretty much every single show we play. It's one of our favorites. Yeah. I would dance if I knew what was playing. I would sing if I just learned the tune. I would laugh if I could hear what you're saying. I would howl if you sat neath the moon. I would cry if my heart was on fire I would sell all my tears for the truth I would work till my heart aches retired Then I'd spend all my time missing you Every night it's just me without you I'm alright, I'm just trying to get through Every day the loss, every night the cost Will I always be the fool? I would speak if I could only make you listen There are verses I write every day I would tell you if I only had the power To make every regret go away But these songs come like honest distractions Like the wind through the trees when it blows There are secrets that hide in the branches But the ones that you keep never show Every night it's just me without you I'm alright, I'm just trying to get through Every day the loss, every night the cost Will I always be the fool? I'd run if I could, but no road leads away again. Being is good, but here I'll stay. I'd pray if I thought it'd make a difference. I'd lay down my pride every day. I would fight for the kiss of forgiveness If I thought it would make you stay But every night it's just me without you I'm alright, I'm just trying to get through Every day the loss, every night the cost Will I always be Every day the loss, every night the cost, will I always be the fool? Now that was beautiful. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> wow. Uh, you guys met down in, you met in Southern California, you say? Uh, yeah, yeah. And you met when Emiko was 11. 
right? Yes. Yeah, I was in the What were you up to? Fourth or fifth grade. I was going to school <laughs> like most fourth and fifth graders do. <laughs> yeah, her her mother had um approached me about about uh doing some lessons, like songwriting lessons and and um I thought, wow, really? You know, at eleven years old, you know, it's it's and, and songwriting's such a gene that you either have or you don't have and and I had heard Emmy sing and and I loved the way she sang, but I had no idea and so I thought I said, Okay and I went and, and it was apparent at age 11. No kidding. She had this thing. And that is 12 years now. And we've written, I don't know, hundreds of songs. Hundreds. We have a whole songbook just filled to the brim. Well, I read 500 songs you guys yeah. have written together. Yeah. yeah, that's just a guess. I mean, it might be more than that. Yeah. We write every week. We meet up every Thursday, Wednesday. Sometimes the day changes. But we, we try and meet up every week and write and... The cool thing is that Emmy's perspective, I mean, since I've known her since she was 11, we ha we share this, I mean, she kind of grew up in front of me, but she has her own unique perspective on writing and coupled with mine, we end up with this, you know, which is... Yeah, and I grew up going to shows that Tom was playing and um, there was something about the songs that he was singing that kind of made me really want to go ahead and be a songwriter and um, his songs were so compelling and I knew that's the kind of music that I really wanted to do the genre so um, yeah I was just really 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 grateful that you know he believed in me and the music that we're doing enough to you know start this partnership so you grew up around music yeah um, <laughs> I grew up uh, my parents played me James Taylor and you know Bob Dylan and all of those. She had parents with good taste. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was fortunate for me. Yeah. yeah. One of my first questions to Tom was if he had ever heard of Arlo Guthrie. And I think this that's was, when. And Sean, this was from an 11 year old. <laughs> I was just like, what? You know who Arlo Guthrie even is? And she had gone to a show. Her dad had taken her to an Arlo Guthrie show. And the my cool thing. Concert, yeah. yeah. And the cool thing about it is she loved it. She didn't just like it. Yeah. She loved it. So it was, it was you know, it was sort of, I think. We like to think it was just meant to be. Yeah. You know. Something deep and apparent from a very young age. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys are um, are working or have just finished a gospel CD? Is that what I hear? We've actually done two gospel CDs and then we're starting a secular one. And our shows, it's funny, our shows are not gospel shows. We just had the opportunity to do these two gospel records and we wrote a, we wrote a slew of songs for them. Mm -hmm. They're cool records too. We actually really like them. But... Um, uh, we're we're now about to start our first secular CD, which is full of the the songs that we mostly do in our concerts. Mm -hmm. And you are the subject of a documentary. That's kind of a, you, do you have a film crew following you around right now? Yeah. No, well, actually, they didn't come to Seattle. Although he sent, you know, it, it's it, it's we're part of this documentary. It, it's a documentary on uh that disney is kind of backing called uh, it's about mentoring in the arts okay and the the one guy that's the main director of the documentary heard our story and went oh my gosh yeah it's like a perfect reflection of you know what a mentor um can really give to a student and then kind of send them on their own on their own path which is yeah. what's happened and we didn't really the, the neat thing i was going to say about our our musical relationship is it started out i mean we did not see it happening like this for it to turn into this duo thing that we do but it a couple of years ago it became obvious we had to do this mm -hmm. oh so this Emmy is just a few years old that you guys have been actually full-on duo yeah. maybe, maybe uh -huh. three i don't yeah. know but however wh whenever it was emmy came to me and said you know because i had sort of floated it out there and she came to me and said you know we should do this we should do this tom and th th from that day magic has happened i mean Every play. It's just been so, magic's probably too strong a word. Oh, I don't know. After that first song, I would agree with that wholeheartedly. <laughs> but, it's, but it's just been, you know, it's kind of something we feel very, uh, uh, I, I want to say vindicated, but that's not, validated in our decision to do this. Every show we do. Right. Every show we do, we go, yeah, yeah, we, we, this was the right choice. So. Well, let's, why don't we hear some more magic? Yeah. <laughs> Not this, to put any pressure on you. Yeah, this one um, <laughs> is called Hopeless, and we, we do write a lot of sad songs, but we've recently read many articles on how uplifting sad songs can be, and uh, the fact that it... Is that so? Yeah, there's, mm -hmm. there's medical 
uh, papers uh, published to this effect. And what it does is instead of making the listener feel sadder, it makes them feel like someone else feels like they do. And it's sort of this sense of I'm not the only one feeling like this. Mm -hmm. And so a friend of mine who came to our show last night, Emmy, and I hadn't told you this, who hadn't heard me in a long time, said, the thing that was so cool, Tom, is I listened to these songs, and some of them are about this, this misery that you feel, and it made me feel so much better about my own. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what this is about. Yeah, music is a cathartic experience. Having said that, this song is called Hopeless. <laughs> We decided, Sean, to just come out and say it. You know what I mean? It's hopeless. It's hopeless. Sometimes it hurts enough to make you bleed. Hold it, Emmy. I'm in the other tuning. Sorry, folks. Got it. It's hopeless. It's hopeless Sometimes it hurts enough to make you bleed It's hopeless It's hopeless The things I see in you, I see in me It started back when I first heard your name I fell for you that I'll take the blame What's lost in love is always such a shame So now I cry It's hopeless It's hopeless I live alone and I don't wonder why It's hopeless It's hopeless I'm guilty and I cannot name the crime the sound of your footsteps as you're leaving The only thing you've done that's not deceiving The promises you made kept me believing But it's a lie It's hopeless It's hopeless Sometimes it hurts enough to make you bleed It's hopeless it's hopeless The things I see in you I see in me Every time I see your face Every time you come around My weakened heart Just won't obey I'm filled with regret the things that we said, the things that will keep you away. It's hopeless, it's hopeless. Sometimes it hurts enough to make you bleed. It's hopeless, it's hopeless. The things I see in you, I see in me. It's hopeless. It's hopeless It's hopeless It's hopeless Well, when you put it like that, it does make me feel a little more cheerful, you know, when someone <laughs> else is more miserable than you, I suppose. Exactly. Exactly, that's all exactly. we're trying to do. Few people actually think it's hopeless. Right. Yeah, but I mean, you listen to any Hank Williams tune and, and you're, you're going to immediately feel better, right? Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you think, that oh, poor guy. Here's a guy. perfect example I'm of so it. Lonesome I'm cry. so lonesome I could cry. People laid down in that song. Mm -hmm. mm. And you do feel better. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you're, uh, I, I'm here with Tom Kell and Amico Woods. Yeah, now, you said you guys get together once a week or so, twice a week to write songs, and I'm wondering, uh, Tom, you're... In your 60s or so, yeah. Miko, early 20s. They were 40 years apart. Right. I oh, okay. 23. Yeah. Happy birthday. Yeah. Oh, happy birthday. Thanks. Right. Are you a Leo? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. <laughs> My sister's tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Yeah. By the way, Leos make me nervous, but for some reason she doesn't. <laughs> they're, they're pretty powerful. 
Exactly. Yeah, they can be, uh, yeah, they're right exactly. out front. So when you guys, I'm interested as to when you write the songs, how how do those different perspectives come together to, you know, how does that work? We have this kind of, we discovered this, but we have kind of similar tastes in speak, in speak like the, what she likes to say and how she likes to say it, what I like to say and how I like to say it are kind of the same. If she brings me a song that she has started, it's generally the same language I would use. And I think that's kind of crucial. Mm -hmm. We don't really write in a different different language and I think it's ageless. She's not writing like a 23 year old and I'm not writing like a 60 year old. We're just writing as a human with one voice. I had a friend, a songwriter friend in Los Angeles that came up to me after hearing our show and said, um, the thing that surprises me the most about your songs is they're all co-written and yet it sounds like one voice and you're so far apart in age, how's that possible? Yeah. I think it's just and the it's magic interesting because it. we both bring different perspectives. You know, you um, being at one point in your life and me being in another, and um, there's just sort of a, a blend that takes place, and it's the music that ultimately makes it work and has brought us together. Yeah. Melodically, in terms of the, the melodies and the music, we we are so similar. Like, mm. what kills me always kills her. Mm -hmm. What kills her always kills me. It's like it's. I never. I really trust that. Another thing, people ask us this all the time. Emmy always uses the word trust. Trust is a huge part of it. Like sh she has to trust me and I have to trust her that, that this is the right way to go with this baby that each of us brings. Mm -hmm. You know, because she brings some and I bring some and we write them together in, in front of each other. So a lot of trust. Mm. Know? I've sat down with many people before Emiko mm. and I've had songs covered that I've co-written with by big artists that I've co-written that I, the whole time I'm writing I'm kind of going I don't really like this anymore <laughs> you know it's like the what I thought was cool about the song kind of got sucked out of it that never happens with us wonderful yeah we challenge each other I guess we never let each other settle for for a lyric so no. it's Emiko I've been saying your name wrong yeah, all this whole time Emiko yeah so okay if you say Emmy and Co Emiko Emiko mm -hmm. all right good <laughs> I'm glad I learned that. I call that. her Wait. Emmy a lot. <laughs> I call her Emmy a you lot. You called me Emiko for a long time, yeah. but it sounded weird for you to say, say it any other way. Yeah. So. so you've got a new album with uh, Ben Harper producing. Yeah, Heard your, caught yeah. your show. and Yeah, he came to the short version of that. You want to tell it, Em? Yeah, um, he just came to one of our shows that we had in Westwood in this really cool um, you know, music shop, and he was only going to stay, he told us later, for, for a couple songs, but he ended up staying for the whole you know hour and a half long set or whatever it ended up being and um he just i don't know he felt just so drawn to our music and we've stayed in touch ever since then and um through a happening of <laughs> events uh yeah he he decided he wanted to produce our our next record it's pretty it's pretty <laughs> it's pretty exciting while, is that yeah. happening now yeah we start um pretty soon after we get back okay yeah. Tom Kell and Emiko Woods here with me live. Sean Donovan here with you on Music and Ideas 91.3. And I know you guys want to find more info on those. Um, we have a website, but it's not up yet. It's almost up. It's been designed, and we're kind of behind the eight ball on that. Yeah. Although, actually, I think all of them are on the TomKell.com website, which is tur being turned into Tom Kell and Emiko Woods. Mm -hmm. But for now, yes. Yeah. It's quick if you just want to find us on Facebook, Tom Kell and Emmy Coates. By the way, if you're bored, like our page. Because if you get to a certain number of likes, your house gets painted for free or something. Oh, really? Yeah, I think if you get oh, enough right. likes. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I think they okay. come and paint your house so or mow your something lawn. Something exciting happens. And right now we're at the dig up the weeds part. We need, we need it anyway. <laughs> but thanks for having us. Your station is legendary. We hear about it all the time. Thank you, Tom. This is a pretty cool... Um, I listened in all day today, just in hopes of hearing our names mentioned. And I didn't hear our names mentioned, but I heard all this other cool stuff. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I heard some amazing stuff. <laughs> Lindy's show, was, or, or the show this afternoon, was really cool. You're, you guys are all looking at me like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, so it's an, it's, uh, we appreciate you having us. A delight to have you. Thanks for coming by. And you have one more song for us? Yeah, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. One of our favorites, actually.
If it made a difference If it made a difference Oh how I'd lie I'd steal If the door was open If the door was open You would be mine I would fight for you I'd be still for you I'd cry out for you If you wanted me to I'd run If I thought I'd catch you If I thought I'd catch you Oh how I'd run I'd dream If I thought I'd see you If I thought I'd kiss you Oh how I'd dream I'd lay down for you Cause of what I found I'd leave this town for you If you wanted me to Is there some reason your heart could deny Every word I'm trying to say Is it just hopeless? Am I wasting my time? And why can't I just walk away? With my arms wide open, with my arms wide open, oh, I would wait forever, or just a moment, maybe just a moment, oh, I would wait, but I'll be brave for you, though I'm afraid for you, I'd dig my grave for you. If you wanted me to. Absolutely gorgeous. Mm. Tom Kell and Emiko Woods, thank you so much for being here. And it's a pleasure. Yeah, pleasure. Thanks for I me. also heard that some of this video may be used. We're videotaping them right now, for those who can't see us, of course. That <laughs> video may be up on kbcs.fm at some point. And that we KBCS video may become part of the uh, Disney documentary. Sure, right? might. Who knows? You never know. That'll require a bunch of release forms. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for Thanks, taking Sean. the time out to be here. Yeah.